Hello friends, welcome to the Blue Feather Ephemera YouTube channel. This is Greg. I also have an eBay store called Blue Feather Ephemera where I sell vintage magazine print advertising. Now on this channel, I show you what sold in my eBay store. This week, we're also going to cover a bonus topic to explain to you how I got just a little bit sneaky recently. So stay tuned for that. First, let's take a look at those ads that sold. This first ad that you're looking at on the screen is for Adam's Corn Curls. And this ad appeared in the Quartermaster Review magazine in 1953. It says, service people and corn curls go arm in arm, just like this G.I. Joe and the G.I. Jane that it's showing in the illustration here. $12.77 sent this ad to California. The next ad is from the same magazine, same issue, 1953, Quartermaster Review. This one is for Elmer's Chewies, a company based in New Orleans. It's a cheese snack made from puffed corn. And this ad also brought $12.77, something we like to keep track of here. This ad is going back to its hometown, New Orleans, Louisiana. Something that I've noticed since I started doing this, we can talk about something one week and then be able to follow up on it the very next week with an example. Last week, we talked about the endangered status of bald eagles during the last century due to an insecticide called DDT. Here we have an advertisement for another dangerous product. Uh, remember, that was a, a bolo that I mentioned to you. Uh, things like DDT and uh, malathion and asbestos. Well, here's another one, Paraquat. It's an herbicide that was made by the Chevron Petroleum Company. This ad appeared in Progressive Farmer Magazine in 1972. It's two partial pages. It brought $12.77, and it's going to Texas. On your screen right now is an ad going back to its hometown, but also this ad ticks another box that we like to keep track of. Uh, when an ad business matches the surname of the buyer, or when the buyer's surname matches somebody that's mentioned in the advertisement, we like to kind of keep tabs on those ads too. This right here is an ad for Phillips greeting cards from Newton, Massachusetts. And a buyer in Massachusetts sent me a message with this purchase and said that their grandfather started this business in the 1920s. This is an ad that they had never seen before. The advertisement comes from a 1952 American Girl magazine and $12.77 is sending it back to Massachusetts. When I was talking about that Quartermaster Review magazine a few minutes ago, I skipped right over this one. Same magazine, same issue. This is a 1953 ad for Stahlmeyer canned meats. It's got a picture of canned ham, chili con carne, frankfurters, and liverwurst. And this ad went to Florida for $6.77. It's a small ad, about three inches by five. I've got a viewer named Lanny that I've exchanged some comments with. And Lanny's mentioned a couple of times that uh, they're surprised about how common and how ordinary some of these advertisements are that I sell. And here's a very common one right here. It's a couch. It's an advertisement for a piece of furniture. Futurian, uh, Futurian, F-U-T-O-R-I-A-N, from 1950, House Beautiful, and uh, $8.77 is sending this to a buyer in New Jersey. Just to keep things hopping, we're going to jump from the mundane to the interesting. Well, at least for me, it's interesting. This is a 1965 ad that appeared in Fortune magazine, and it's an ad for International Harvester. If you'll recall, last week I told a little bit of an International Harvester story, and here's another one real quick. Uh, they were installing a gas turbine. It's called solar. It don't have, really have anything to do with solar power, but a gas turbine being installed in Iran. Now, in 1965, 
the Iran and the U.S. was friends. We had companies working there. We had businesses investing uh, all kinds of money in Iran. Uh, the Shah was uh, friendly to the U.S. government, and they had a military full of U.S. Uh, airplanes and tanks and all of that. Then during the 1970s, uh, the fundamentalist uh, uh, regime took over and deposed the Shah, and the Shah was exiled and all of that. But up until that time, uh, we were close business partners. So I think that's a little bit interesting. $16.77 sent this ad to a buyer in Indiana. Here's a two-page advertisement for Jeep. This appeared in a 1982 Sports Illustrated magazine. And on the left side there, it shows a Jeep Wagoneer. And on the right side, it shows their pickup truck called the Jeep Scrambler. And uh, this ad for $18.77 is going to a buyer in Arizona. If you're a reseller of advertising, here's one to keep your eyes peeled for. From 1952 Look Magazine, this is an advertisement for Ham's Beer. I can say with certainty that during the past year, I've sold more of these Ham's Beer ads than any other brand of beer. They're visually attractive, which makes them nice for decorating, uh, you know, around a bar or a man cave. With these amber beer glasses in front of a blue background, now, the company is based in St. Paul, Minnesota, and Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, and they always make reference to water here uh, in their ads. This one says, yours at the bewitching hour from the land of sky blue waters. $14.77 sent this ad to Wisconsin. Next is a type of advertisement that I always scratch my head about when one sells, not because of the content or the age or anything else, but because of the shape of the ad. Now, I realize that with the, all these custom framing shops around, that you can get a nice frame for an ad like this, but the proportion is a little bit odd. It's a quarter page, about three inches wide, 14 inches high. This is for Union Pacific Railroad. It appeared in House Beautiful, 1937. And it's talking about one of their travel destinations, Sun Valley Lodge in Ketchum, Idaho. $10.77 sent this ad to California. I always try to provide helpful information in my videos, but now I want to ask for information, see if I can get some help. I always use gallery quality backing boards and a plastic sleeve and a stay flat mailer to send out my ads. For one like this, I would use an 11 by 14 backing board and an 11 by 14 plastic sleeve, and it would go in a 12 inch by 15 inch stay flat mailer. Now, that's a lot of excess material, in my opinion, and uh, it would help to cut costs and save on packaging if I could get this into a mailer that would uh, be closer to the size of the ad. If anybody out there knows of a source of material like that. If you could drop a note uh, in comments or contact me, I'd appreciate it. This nice full-color, full-page ad includes great art, and it's for a company called Wurlitzer, and it appeared in Look Magazine 1943. In the picture there, it shows soldiers maybe in a coffee shop or a recreation hall, they might not be dancing, but they're snapping their fingers and shuffling their feet and singing do wah diddy um, It talks about in the ad how the company is engaged in wartime production. 100% of their factory capacity is going to the war effort, but as soon as victory comes, they'll return to making machines that play the music of democracy around the world. $18.77 sent this ad to New York. This advertisement appeared in Fortune Magazine, 1940. It's for a company called Bruning. And the ad talks about how draftsmen are involved in every aspect of design, uh, in, specifically in this case in the transportation industry, whether you travel by car or airplane or train, then a draftsman and other engineers were involved in the design of the products. 
It talks about how they've innovated a black and white print process that saves time and material. As you know, I like to keep track of when the surname of a buyer matches the name of a company or the name of a person that's mentioned in an ad. That's the case with this ad, Bruning, but in this situation, that's where the fun just gets started. Uh, early on in the days of this YouTube channel, uh, I exchanged some comments with uh, a viewer named The Bookworm. The Bookworm has an eBay store, and I've been there before. Recently, I just decided to check out what's going on with that store. And I got to tell you, The Bookworm is doing a fantastic job. The store looks great, and I'm going to drop a link to that store in the comments to this video, or not the comments, but in the description of this video, so that you can go and check it out and see what the bookworm's doing, because there's a lot of things that the bookworm is doing better than I can do with the visual graphics and things like that. Anyway, um, I looked at completed sales for their store, and I found they had sold a Bruning ad just a few days ago, so I reached out and I said, by any chance, did that ad go to a buyer named Bruning in Texas? And they responded quickly and said, yeah, it sure did. So uh, just uh, I thought that was uh, fun and interesting and wanted to share that with you. Anyway, $21.77 sent this ad to Texas. I've sold several pages like this from magazines, and you could argue whether it's even actually advertising or not. I would say that it is because it's images like this that help sell the magazines. So I call it a woman's home companion advertisement. Uh, it's somebody's product that they're showing on the screen. So uh, I, I feel okay about that. And the buyer knows exactly what they're getting anyway. It may not matter to them what it's called. But from 1936, Woman's Home Companion, this page shows bridal gowns. For $16.77, it's going to a buyer in California. In the category of advertisements for ordinary things, here's a 1951 ad from Life Magazine for Lee Workwear. Now, it shows a man here in the work clothing department getting measured for coveralls, and there's also a man standing there in overalls with a boy wearing jeans. Now, whether you call it dungarees or denim or blue jeans, it was popular. Lee was the premier brand until Levi's came on strong sometime in the 1970s. But uh, $12.77 sent this ad to North Carolina. You could call this a bolo right here, uh, something to be on the lookout for. I've got a Hiram Walker ad, but the bolo ain't about the whiskey. It's about that snow cat that's in the background there. The uh, snow cat, anytime I see one in advertising, I will add probably about a 20% premium, uh, premium on top of the base price for an ad like that. Uh, folks like to see them. They catch attention, and buyers eat them up. $16.77 sent this ad to New York. Next up are two sales to the same buyer. This first one for Clearing Presses appeared in Fortune Magazine, 1953. That company made pressed steel products, and it says it's an alternative to casting molten metal to get specially fabricated parts. This ad went for 1877 to Illinois. This is the second ad going to that buyer. But where the last one was a single page black and white ad, this is two full pages in color. Both ads are for Clearing Press's company of Hamilton, Ohio. This one appeared in Fortune Magazine, 1954. Uh, this one also talks about pressed steel products. It goes into some detail, though, about how the company's engineers can come in and help a manufacturer to maximize productivity. Uh, this ad went for $28.77, both ads going to Illinois. This is my only international sale of the week. This is for Robertson Aircraft Corporation, and it's based in Renton, Washington. And it's advertising a high-lift system. Now, I don't know what that is, but in the graphic for the company's logo, 
it has the letters S-T-O-L, which stands for short takeoff landing. And so it might be that this high lift system is something that would help a plane operate from a shorter airfield. I just can't be sure. But anyway, $6.77 sent this ad from Private Pilot Magazine 1979 to a buyer in Spain. Here's a simple black and white small ad, about four inches by five, from the Quartermaster Review Magazine, 1946. It shows some little cartoon bakers putting cookies in the oven, and it's advertising Weston's Cookies, their Dainty Fair and Bonnie Fair cookies, and Salamanca, New York, was one of their bakery locations that I put in the title of the ad there. They mentioned Passaic, uh, New Jersey, and also Battle Creek, Michigan. $8.77 sent this ad to Arizona. Okay, I've got just a couple of more ads to show you, and then I'm going to reveal to you how I got a little bit sneaky recently. This ad is for Ingalls Ironworks. It's based in Birmingham, Alabama, and in the advertisement, it shows one of their recent uh, ships that they produced in their Pascagoula, Mississippi shipyard. It's called the African Comet. And then the other image there is an aircraft repair facility. This appeared in Fortune Magazine, 1942. It's going to a repeat buyer in Delaware for $18.77. Last week, our bonus topic was celebrity endorsements, and here we have a celebrity endorsement for sports equipment. It is Mary Lena Falk Signature Golf Clubs from Spalding, Top Flight Brand, Sports Illustrated, 1957, ran this advertisement. In the text of the ad, I learned something. The woods are made from persimmon. And I'm familiar with persimmon wood and the fruit, but I've never heard of any product being made of persimmon wood before. So I learned something. $12.77 sent this ad to Florida. This last ad that I'm showing you here transitions us into the bonus topic. Uh, the ad is for Blinko Glass. It's showing a, a line of decanters that they marketed in 1964. This ad appeared in House Beautiful Magazine. I sold it for $12.77. It's going to Arizona. Now, a question that's pertinent to people who sell vintage magazine advertising on eBay would be, what sold this ad? Why did somebody buy it? Well, I have a couple of answers to that. Blanco glass is really good glass. It's made in the USA. It has a strong following. It brings a high price. And if you've sold any vintage or antiques in a physical space, you know that when you see Blanco glass, you can expect it to have a hefty price tag because there's collectors of it. And as you know, when there's collectors of a thing, that thing is going to have a Pinterest group, which... I've never figured out Pinterest. Uh, I can't. I can't do Pinterest. I don't do TikTok. If there is TikTok collectors groups, but uh, I know a little bit about Instagram, and I'm, I'm pretty adept at Facebook. So these groups of collectors are out there. What you see on screen is one of the groups of Blinko glass collectors. This group has about eighteen thousand people in it. And here's another Blinko collectors group, 46,000 members in this one. So between those two Facebook groups, there's about 64,000 people with an interest in Blinko glass. And here's how I got just a little bit sneaky. I showed up in one of those groups a couple of months ago, and I just dropped that page right there. And I said, oh, by the way, this is from House Beautiful 1964. And I left it at that. And the idea there was not to sell an ad, but to spur interest in print advertising that might complement somebody's collection. And I didn't do it in a presumptuous way. I didn't show up and say, I know y'all are collecting glass, but here's some paper for you or anything like that. But I felt like that 
you know, providing that advertisement was informational for the group because somebody might have one of those decanters and without some deep research, they might not know if it was produced in 1964 or 1984 or 2004. So it's, it was helpful to the group and it got people thinking about print ads. And it seems like I may not be the only seller that's doing this. Somebody else gets the credit for this Blinko ad from Time Magazine 1947 that showed up in one of these groups. And of course, that's not the only place that I sprinkled a little blue feather sunshine back around that time. Uh, here's an advertisement for Costco metal furniture products. They made metal uh, formica top tables, uh, high, baby high chairs, and also step stools and uh, bar stools for uh, mid-century kitchens. That company and those products have their own collector's group, Costco Crazed, 1,800 members of this group. I'll take the credit for this nice Viking glass ad from House Beautiful 1964 that showed up in a Viking glass collector's group. That's another example of how just a minute or two of my time put that advertisement in front of the eyes of up to potentially 24,000 people who have a relevant interest in the product that's advertised. I'll interject here that this isn't just an idea for print advertising. There's nostalgia for all things. You think about somebody feeling nostalgia for their hometown, they might do it with a print advertisement for a product that was made in the town where they live. But if you're a seller of postcards, you might have a postcard from, say, Lawton, Oklahoma or Seymour, Indiana, 1927 street scene. You will find a group for that town and you can just drop that postcard there and let people stew over whether or not they want to go searching for postcards for their hometown. What you're looking at right now is a page from TV Guide, and I don't have any old TV Guide magazines, but you can bet if I did, I'd be piecing them out uh, to list advertising like this. This is just an ad for a Tuesday night lineup, and it's late 70s or maybe early 80s for Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Three's Company, Too Close for Comfort, and Heart to Heart. This showed up in a group called Back to the 70s and 80s. That group has over 500,000 members. And there's a similar group called Growing Up in the 70s and 80s that has more than 1 million members. So people aren't just nostalgic for products. They also have an interest in things like this. So there's the bonus topic, uh, how I got a little bit sneaky with that marketing idea. And... You don't have to do it. You don't need to. You can take it or leave it. But uh, I believe that it's a uh, fun and interesting way to get print advertising in front of the eyes of people who will see it as a way to augment decor or supplement their collections. All right. As we close out, let's recap like we always do what sold this week. I was thrilled and blessed to have 22 sales for $321.94. They included two sales where the product went back to its city of origin. I had two sales where the buyer's surname matched the company name or the name of a person in the ad. I had an international global shipping program sale, and I also had one sale to a repeat customer. As always, I want to thank you for watching. I feel honored that you chose to invest some of your time with me, and I hope to see you again next week. Hey, while you're here, I want to invite you to visit my eBay store, Blue Feather Ephemera. The link is down below in the description of this video. I always say that if a thing was made, sold, collected, celebrated, or built, you can bet it was also advertised. Classic vintage advertising makes great decor for your bar, restaurant, man cave, salon, garage, anywhere the right vibe is essential.
If you enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, please hit the like button, share it with friends, and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time.